I couldn't wake up and exist and be like, yeah, I exist. No, no, it's like, why though? Why? And why here? And why now? And why me? And that's not fair. And it's so hard to express that because A, you're living in a first world country. You are having, both, like both of your parents are still together. You shouldn't feel this way. There's no reason for you to feel this empty. And if you're not into spiritual stuff, this just sounds meaningless. So I wanna go deeper into what emptiness really means. Emptiness is not finding yourself when you look at the mirror. Emptiness is waking up and not knowing where you are. It is looking at your friends and family and feeling that you're not even in the same room as them. Emptiness is you have no ground to stand on whatsoever. Because it all disappears. It is so easy to just say, yeah, that's depression or whatever, but it wasn't depression. I was depressed when I was 15 years old, but I, I came over that. This is something different. This isn't depression. This is existential, like a permanent existential crisis. As if existential crisis is like imprinted in my DNA. That's how it felt like at least. I've always wondered how could God allow so much suffering and it plagued me my entire life. And I guess this is why society is so superficial because we don't want to acknowledge it. It's just not comfortable. It's disgusting. I wasn't suicidal. I wanted that everything disappeared. If I just disappeared, what wouldn't be good enough? It felt unfair to exist at all. And when you really go into spirituality and you start to understand that it's all you, then you either become psychotic or enlightened. I have forgotten how much I suffered. I've forgotten about that. Because I'm feeling pretty good. For the last three years I'm feeling pretty good. And I'd never imagine that I experience all of this shit and end up believing that actually what emptiness is made out of is pure love and bliss. That at the core of existence, existence just wants to love you. And this sounds so woohoo, esoteric and cringe. Like who could possibly believe that? Have you seen the war in Gaza right now? Have you seen the war in Ukraine? And then you're gonna tell me that there's some all loving fundamental reality underlying all of this? Nah, hell nah. That's not possible. That's just wishful thinking. This is the horror of what unconditional love looks like. We don't understand unconditional love because we humans are conditional. If it doesn't further my survival, then it cannot be love. Spirituality is a serious topic. It's not about taking some drugs and tripping out. It's not about having it as a trendy thing. It is really wrestling with what it means to be A being capable of suffering and love. And I found love. I found the answer to every philosophical and spiritual question I've ever had. <laughs> and I'm definitely not enlightened, but I've been far removed from all of these existential sufferings. I mean, I suffer how any human does in just the day to day, but Life isn't hard anymore. It never was good enough for me to just say everything is and just be here and the power of now and all of these platitudes who are kind of curiosity stoppers. And they have their time and place and there is some very important fundamental truth to them. But the existential depth is scientific. We aren't far enough yet. But the universe is made out of fields. And we are part of this field that is experience. And I've always kind of shied away from expressing how certain I am about this. Because I always want to remain open-minded and I want to always, um, yeah, not fall into any ideological dogmatic thinking. But I know that's, that it, it, is, it is true. Reality is made out of fields and you are part of this field. And if you collapse this field, it is non-dual and all like, distinctions seem to disappear. Your ego creates a sense of separation and therefore you see distinctions and they become real to you. But when you die, you merge into this infinite field. And I'm as, as certain about this as I am of anything. You enter into paradoxes, but there is a logical underpinning here. And I believe that science will figure it out sooner or later. And through psychedelics and taking them more seriously, we're starting to see, oh, 
there's much more to this existence than just this human reality. And it can even be helpful to have access to these experiences. But let me tell you, it can also be very, very traumatizing. <laughs> very traumatizing and always when we talk about these states of like making fun about <laughs> having tried dmt which i haven't i've just taken a bunch of yeah uh, mushrooms and a bit of lsd but these are no jokes these experiences are so visceral nothing compares and if you take enough your entire life becomes a joke in comparison and when i had my horror trip which ended in a pleasant ego death but the trip itself was so like it was worse than any suffering I've ever experienced in my entire life times one billion. It was so awful that it traumatized me. Like, like I had this realization of, oh, I'm becoming psychotic and absolutely nobody will be able to help me. And then I all, also had this realizations about like God consciousness and, and stuff. And it's like, okay, I'm an insane person now. Good job. <laughs> you took so many drugs. You are now in the insane, insane asylum. But it wasn't insanity. It was a glimpse. Glimpse? It was a glimpse into truth. And it doesn't even have to be drug induced. You can also have a bad breakup and then realize, oh God, death is real. What the fuck? Because so much time has passed. I've been so removed from this nature, from this deep existential feeling of, wow, I exist. That's, inc that's crazy. Because there was also a lot of fascination and beauty in, in realizing how magical existence is. It wasn't all suffering and anguish. There was a lot of incredible recognition of beauty and right now my life in my life i'm more in this beauty state i have not that much contact to this dark place anymore but i understand now my purpose on this planet is to help people who are in this dark place and pull them out of it this is what this channel is going to be about and then this also connects into like of course the broader self-help space of helping people in their relationships helping people with drug addiction helping people with um, finding their path in life, all of this relates, but at the core, there's existential dread that needs to be solved. I spend so much time trying to be more articulate in front of the camera, so much time writing better, so much time on, yeah, just general YouTube stuff. And if you look at my channel, my videos are pretty YouTube-y, like they're trying to be. And I was trying to just attract a wide audience because this is what everybody's trying to do. Of course, I had this understanding that I somehow want to help people, but I wanted to make a business out of this. Or like, I want to make a business out of this. I want to create a community of people who come together, who understand the spiritual significance of reality and the philosophical rigor that is required to really understand it. And I want to bring them together and yeah, help them find a sense of community for these types of topics. <laughs> and now when I'm speaking it out loud, it's like, yeah, that's a very good idea, but it wasn't specific enough. And I've just found it. <laughs> and it's so funny because I'm going to become a spiritual guru. I can already see it. Like, that's the path that I'm heading towards. And I still don't know how I'm about to, f like, how I will feel about this. It's odd. I will also engage with people at their most vulnerable. Because if I remember how I was, I was so vulnerable. And there was nobody there to help me. Nobody could possibly grasp what I've gone through. It is so out of this world. Before the psychedelic trip, my mind was completely existentially obsessed. And then I had this beautiful, beautiful experience. And it, this like accelerated this times like a thousand and converted my philosophy into like a more spiritual sense. And then I had a ton of psychedelic experiences, but then I think it's a experience number 20, 18, I don't know. There was one experience that showed me the other side of heaven. Like, it's just such an intense experience. You can, the moment you're in there, it's just like, oh, now I understand why people can actually jump up a bridge or like try to harm themselves on these states because you immediately get, oh, okay, there's a point where my physical body will not be able to endure this and I will lose complete control. But the same with the beauty aspects. Like, there's just such a sense of bliss and beauty when you have, when you let go of the sense of self and don't resist and you really accept reality, then it's just like, oh, Everything is made out of love, clearly. Like there's no way you can deny it in this in these states. Once you sober up and you are mentally sane, you of course are going to question these experiences, which is healthy. But I'm pretty sure that the mechanics of it is that you have an ego structure and this ego structure through psychedelics dissolves itself. And when you dissolve the ego structure, you are in closer contact to what is actually real. 
instead of having it filter through your own identity and then suddenly everything becomes more harmonic in your state space of consciousness and this harmony then creates a sense of love because love is just harmony like vibrations who work together in coherence this is the scientific hypothesis of it all for more info you can look into um, the qualia research institute very high level science though um, it's going to be hard to understand like you really want like you really have to want to understand it a lot of self-doubts came from not being able to speak fluent english not being able to yeah not not talk not to know like this to not talk fluently and then to make cuts and make it somehow entertaining but i think if you resonate with what i'm saying here you don't care if it's entertaining you just resonate with what i'm saying and i do feel a bit alone in the sense that yeah nobody that i know could possibly relate to what i'm saying here it is too weird i guess of course most people can understand about like human suffering and all, like everybody deals with this i'm not special you know like whoever you are you have suffered in your life and I don't want to make it into a suffering competition either because there are a lot worse lives than mine and there are clearly people who would win this competition. The esoteric aspects of it, existential philosophy aspects of it are very unrelatable to most people. This metaphysical seeking. Most people are very satisfied with a religion that has been given to them or also atheism where it's just like, oh, there's no, like, bigger meaning to this, this is just mechanics and that's that. Which kind of is true, but in the same sense religion or like the belief in God is also kind of true. It is a paradox that will take me quite a few videos to unwrap correctly. Most atheists stop when you start to talk about paradoxes because if it is not be not able to explain by logic, then it can't be true. When you actually notice that your immediate experience isn't, like it is emerging out of logical processes, but the experience themselves are not logical, they just appear. But I've helped people so far. I've done coaching sessions with people and people who have carried to the end, like who actually stuck with my sessions, they've changed. They've changed forever. But I should be satisfied if I even make the world 0.001% better. Because hey, one life is everything I know. <laughs> Just the one. I feel I made myself very vulnerable in this video. <laughs> you know that shit is serious. <laughs> Life is a real thing. And it's immense in its beauty, but also in its agony. And I think in this divide between heaven and hell, you can't find purpose because you shouldn't feel agony. I've never thought I'd be able to be so satisfied in my life as I am right now. I didn't think it was possible because if reality has potential for suffering in the way it has, then I could not be satisfied. It would just be, igno be ignorant of what is happening. But yeah, you are kind of meant to be ignorant about what is happening and to focus on what is really relevant in your life and that you can control to make things better. There's no use in suffering what other people are already feeling. It's, it's, just, it's pointless. Empathy is only good in the way that it helps you to yeah help others. And if not, it's useless. Because if I want to bring other people out of this darkness, I kind of have to go back to where I was before. I just need to wear my heaven suit to not get affected and to still remain smiling at the top of the hill while others are stuck in hell. I will stay on top of the hill smiling but i throw ropes down and try to carry people up to where i am go videos on 4chan especially yeah stuff related to suicide but also some like torture stuff i don't find pleasure in watching this and it's not something i do often but sometimes i do and the way i look at these things also i've transformed greatly when i was very young it was very very disturbing and of course i got desensitized over time but my mind went philosophical like i couldn't i didn't look at this to just see chopped off heads i looked at it and asked myself is reality benevolent how could it possibly be benevolent how do people believe in god when they see these atrocities happening it transformed into now looking at this like i see somebody killing themselves in a video on 4chan and i recognize myself in the video like i see conscious experience happening to this person as if I am in this person which sounds extremely trippy and extremely crazy but I recognize it not as an other but as a other version of me like another life 
and see this and I say, that's okay. Not, it's not desirable. It's not something that should happen. It's something that is to be prevented. It's just a symptom of a larger issue right now that is in such a huge scale that we need, need to solve for. Like it cannot be the case that right now we are in a society that is creating artificial intelligence, but we haven't solved depression. We haven't solved suicidality. We haven't solved purpose and meaning for most of our human citizens. God damn it, we haven't even solved uh, like global hunger, but yeah. And I guess it's because most of us just want to consume and looking at the suffering of life isn't really something that yeah, we want to make ourselves responsible for, but nobody is responsible ever. Responsibility is a really bad sales pitch. <laughs> the only way responsibility is a good sales pitch is if it is about improving your life. Um, it's this uh, Jordan Peterson, clean up your own room type, uh, type advice. But of course it resonates with a ton of people because most people don't even feel responsible for their own well-being. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was a heavy video, but for me today is a good day. I feel like I made some important realizations. And I wish you the best.